Hi, this is Chris Ippolite from iSolutions, and here with another video to talk about FileMaker and HTML5. Uh, this time I'm going to show you sort of the process uh, for integrating HTML5 uh, and JavaScript and CSS. And again, when, I, when I'm using the term HTML5, I just want to let you know I'm really talking about embedding JavaScript code or jQuery code uh, and CSS code inside HTML uh, inside a web viewer in FileMaker, uh, which of course points to a browser that supports HTML5. So let's talk about sort of uh, how we really use this and, and uh, talk about this in sort of a practical manner. So let's say I've got this database here and it's a project management database and you see I've got a bunch of tasks and contributors and stuff like that and what I'd really like is some sort of interface that uh, maybe shows me a Gantt chart of all the different contributors and their the tasks and shows when the tasks are done and percent complete and stuff like that. Well, FileMaker's charting tool doesn't have a Gantt chart. Uh, let's say I want to show a progress bar over here too, which is just a single bar uh, chart. FileMaker's uh, inherent uh, charting tool doesn't have that ability either. And uh, let's say maybe I want to look at all the different tasks in sort of a collapsible list. Well, what we can do is go to our favorite uh, JavaScript library sites. Here's jQuery user interface, uh, which is jQueryUI.com, and uh, this is a great example of a site that's got a bunch of different uh, widgets and interactions that you can look at, and here's a perfect one. I, I like this one a lot. It's uh, very similar to FileMaker's subsummary uh, reporting type view, uh, but what it is is just uh, you know a section that's collapsible and shows some details and I kind of like this one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to integrate that. Um, you'll notice in all these different sites that they have the ability to view the source. And you'll notice here there's a bunch of HTML. And if I go here and download um, all the different files, uh, it'll give me free access to all the files. There's a bunch of sites like this. As a matter of fact, uh, this one I like as well when it comes to the charting. This has got a bunch of different charts, uh, like for example, we were talking about uh, the idea of getting a progress bar. So here's one, kind of like these, maybe something like this, uh, a little bit plain. Um, and let's see, what else? How about a Gantt chart? Let's see if we've got some Gantts here. And yeah, these aren't the only sites out there, but you can go to whatever sites that you want to. Uh, these are just a couple that I happen to like. Ooh, I like this one over here. So I'll go and download all the files. And what I'll end up with when all is said and done is a series of uh, HTML files along with some Java uh, code and some CSS files. So really, HTML5 is really just the combination of an HTML that references, you see we've got some JavaScript there, we've got some JavaScript here, and we've even got a style sheet there. So what I've, I've been able to do is download the style sheet, the two JavaScript files, and the HTML from that website that we saw earlier. And here's that accordion one. Accordion, here's what its HTML looks like. And they give me some demo uh, HTML, uh, some demo text or copy here. And the two different JavaScript files and the one CSS file. Actually, there's another style CSS file here as well. So I've downloaded all of these, even the Gantt chart for that matter. Uh, we see he's got some, again, HTML page with uh, some references to some JavaScript and CSS. And so I made sure to get the JavaScript and CSS files and I've also got the HTML files here. So all this is just free on the internet. Uh, gotta be honest, uh, when I look at a JavaScript file like this, it doesn't mean anything to me. I don't know what I'm looking at, but I do know what I'm looking at when I see the HTML. Uh, and this is what we can do to integrate this into our FileMaker database. So we've got our, our code, and now we'll take a look at, here's the sort of finished version of the database. You'll notice here I've got a Gantt chart and I've got a progress bar, and these are all fully dynamic. As a matter of fact, watch this bar over here. You're going to see that as I check off these different uh, tasks as completed, you'll see that the percent complete uh, tab is changing, and it can go the other direction as well if I take some of these tabs and make them not complete. Uh, for example, you see it going down. Uh, the Gantt chart reflects dynamically reflects all the different 
uh, contributors and what percent complete of the project they're on and also the day of the year that their first task is to start and the, the day of the year that their last task is to end. So you notice here Boo Radley, see how his uh, bar is starting right there just to kind of show you how this is fully interactive. I will go to um, the very first one here and let's change that to oh let's just say January 2nd so we go here and you'll notice how Jingle Bell who was assigned to that task uh, their uh, bar chart or the bar portion of the Gantt uh, has automatically updated so if we go back here and go say let's say February 12th whatever that was we see that it's all automatically updating and the reason for that is because this is a web viewer and the web viewer is just simply pointing to one field and of course the web viewer uses the calculation engine and as I've mentioned in previous videos uh, and in different presentations uh, really what a web viewer is is an unstored calculation that uh, results in a web page. I've also added a web viewer here same thing just pointing to one simple file and then there's a third area I'd like to demo to you where I've integrated that accordion view so here's kind of a cool way to look at my data this is each of the contributors and all their related tasks with the totals of their tasks in this cool kind of collapsible view uh, that can be viewed this way uh, and is also uh, fully supported on the iPad, which I'll show you as well. So how do I do this? Okay, so real quick, this is going to be the 30,000 foot view of how this works. So what I do is I look at the HTML. Let's just focus on the, let's say the easy one here, which is our progress bar. So we've got the HTML and then all the different JavaScript. So the first thing I do is I go into my FileMaker database and I create a new table. In this case I've created a table called resources and in resources I've created a field for every document that I'm going to need. So uh, specifically we've got progress has an HTML it's also got a series of different jQuery files in here and I've gone in and created a table called resources and I've created a series of global fields. And The reason I do global fields is because then I don't have to worry about context and relationships and linking to these. I can reference uh, these fields from any context in my database. So it, it makes it integration a lot easier. So now uh, you'll notice that I've got in browse mode, I've actually got a table. So here's my progress HTML. Uh, it's the same HTML that I have over here just copied it and went back into my field and just pasted all that in there and more importantly I've done the same thing with the JavaScript again don't really know what all this means don't really care I just know it's gonna work and and I've seen the demos so I know what it's gonna do so I just go in here to my JavaScript and I copy it and I go in and I find the appropriate field and uh, just paste it in. So once I've got a global field defined in a resources table for every HTML, CSS, or JavaScript file, I then go and populate them. And then all I have to do is create my output calculation. So for example, this is what the HTML needs to look like. If I copy this, I'll then go into my database and find whatever context I want this to display. And in this case, I've got an events table. Uh, and in the events table, I've created the, let's see, progress HTML calc. Now it looks kind of verbose, but all this is, just to give you an idea, if I paste the HTML, Here's what I want, I eventually want to, to have show up is this HTML right here. Okay, so all I've done is I've used FileMaker's calculation dialog window to reproduce this. Now you'll notice in a couple areas here, I just did some plain text. I have to put my data URL, which you don't see in the original HTML, put my data URL so it'll actually show up in a web viewer. 
and then you know just my headers and you'll notice that I'm doing these line breaks where I do a ampersand return character ampersand I do that so that the outputted code will actually look like this in case I have to do any proofing I can open this right up in a text editor and compare it with the original HTML to see if I have any syntax errors but those original items were easy to put in there um, you'll notice I've got some additional meta headers in there which aren't ne necessary to the functionality but here's where I'm calling the demo CSS and you'll notice that um, we've got that right here it's, I've, I've done it in a calculation instead so I've just got the text that says style type equals that's the opening tag and then anytime that you see something in quotes I just use the quote function in FileMaker and then concatenate that with the field here's that global field that I created in the resources table where I just copied and pasted the CSS so here instead of having to uh, do an external link to a web server that's hosting these which is the conventional method uh, for uh, referencing this information I just reference the fields in a calculation and I go through the entire HTML until I've got all the, that information. Now you'll notice here I've got uh, this this canvas ID and here what I've done with the canvas ID instead of hard coding in the height and the width which is 400 and 100 I'm using the get layout object attribute which is dynamically giving me the height of my web viewer minus 25 pixels so that as I resize the layout it's going to resize the web viewer as well and I'll, I'll show you that in just a second but the big thing here is the script part this is where the actual function itself is, is running and so I open up the script to show window function but instead of having you'll notice inside the brackets here in the original HTML what was hard-coded in here was uh, the name of the object and then this is the percent complete versus the total percent that I want to show on the graph so what I did is I created a event progress calc and if we look at that right here this is all just text so I mimicked that first part of the ta the the text so this is what it was what it needs to look like when it's done but what I did is I did a little trick I, I took the first part of the the text again it doesn't mean anything to me I don't know what it is and then the last part which is always gonna be a hundred and then in order for this 89 to be dynamic I created a calculation field which is called task percent complete again using the calculation engine which simply just takes all the, the tasks for this project divides them by the amount completed and then multiplies that by a hundred and it gives me a value so now what I've got is the HTML that we originally saw but instead of it all being hard-coded it's fully dynamic and it's fully dynamic based on the values that we see inside the database and by the way here's that resizable Thing that we talked about so you'll notice if I have a very small window it shrinks up and if I expand it out um, it gets larger after the refresh same thing with the Gantt chart um, so just a little bit of a trick there uh, so again a, a, a quick overview the idea here is go and grab your HTML and all your corresponding JavaScript create a resources table inside that resources table define a field for each one of the JavaScript and CSS files that are required and then replicate the HTML in a calculation using line breaks for text and your quote function to to escape the different uh, quoted text that you see so that basically you come up with you use your skills that you've got from a FileMaker calculation uh, engine standpoint use the calculation engine and your skill set to output this data and then once you've got your calculation field all set go and add a web viewer to your layout and simply reference that calculation field so it takes a very as a matter of fact it doesn't take any knowledge of JavaScript any knowledge of HTML if you can use your chops for creating calculations to output the HTML that's necessary and integrate in 
different calculations uh, which incorporate the data within your, your application, you can easily grab JavaScript or jQuery libraries off the web and integrate this functionality into your own database. And uh, incidentally, if you find the right type of JavaScript, you can even uh, work with JavaScript. Uh, if you find the right JavaScript, uh, just a quick note, some JavaScript it works on the web or on iOS devices. So for example, here, you'll notice that I've got an example of this same database and I didn't have to go and create a whole nother set of JavaScript. What I did is instead I found, uh, apologies, move this over a little bit. What I did is go and I went and I found a JavaScript library that's supported not only on the desktop, but also on the web. So you'll notice here what I've got um, is a layout where I've still got my same progress bar and Gantt chart uh, that I've integrated into the layout on the iPad and it's the same code. So um, that's just a real a, a tip here for you to be careful when you're picking different jQuery uh, libraries and code to make sure that they still work on iOS if you plan to use them on Go. So this is a, another example of integrating uh, this sort of family of technologies, which we like to call HTML5, into a FileMaker database and localizing them, meaning that we, this database could be fully offline and it would still run, uh, it minimizes security concerns, does, doesn't have to have access to the web, and everything is completely driven by the calculation engine. So um, please have some fun with this, and again, check back to FileMakerHTML5.com for more videos and updates in the future. Thanks for watching.